You're listening to and watching Seattle Neighborhood Crier. It's our first show. And, and everybody's in group chat. Forgot to get that on your top left. And we're going to introduce everybody. First, I'm uh, Chet, and I uh, started Media Crier Productions, and I've done a lot of uh, SNAP classes and CERT classes, and and I started wanted to start a podcast that would uh, tie everybody together. Uh, the Block Watch, because at times you there's, feel like there's not enough information out there and or community to to keep it all for me going. And now we're gonna go to uh, uh, Chaz. Hi, I'm Chaz Redman. I live in West Seattle and have been involved in civic activism for the last 10 years. And uh, my role in the uh, town crier, Seattle crier, will be to sort of walk everybody through what we're going to call Civics 101. Where do you live? How do you contact city government? And uh, what are the best ways to do those things? So looking forward to the uh, whole series. And Cindy. Hi, I'm Cindy Barker. I'm also involved with a uh, community, but my focus has been on uh, emergency preparedness. And I'm with a group called the Seattle Emergency Communication Hubs. And we're an all-volunteer group that works to uh, encourage preparedness throughout the city of Seattle. And then our real activity is to be uh, an asset to the community. Should there be a major disaster, we would set up uh, locations where neighbors can come and start to help neighbors while the city creates its own effective response. So the hubs, disaster preparedness, and um, the CERT, uh, which stands for citizens uh, working together in response teams. And we'll be covering those different aspects of emergency preparedness. Edwin. And to Edwin. Uh, yeah, um, my name's Edwin Beatty, and I live on Beacon Hill. Uh, I moved here about two and a half years ago to Beacon Hill, but I've lived in Seattle about 22 years. And uh, um, in the last year on Beacon Hill in my neighborhood, we started a block watch with the intention from the, from the beginning to make it not just about public safety, but also about emergency preparedness and civic engagement, something I've been involved with since I arrived in Seattle. Um, things like everything from the cable refranchise to uh, other issues about uh, um, uh, media access and digital divide issues, etc. So, uh, yeah, so those are all topics that interest me. And I'm otherwise a video producer, artist, uh, writer. All right. And then, well, this is our first show, and uh, it's going to be going to take us about a few episodes to really get the hang of it here. And next, we're going to just go through what we did this last week. Um, uh, I went to the Peddler's Fair, which was the local bicycle uh, fair of, lo of local uh, bike producers, bike builders, or bike uh, makers of products. That was up on, on Capitol Hill at the Russian Center, which I've never been before. It's a beautiful place. And... Edwin. Oh, okay. Uh, in the last week, one of the things that I spent a lot of time, uh, a lot of my volunteer time working on are homeless issues. Um, and uh, so I was working on our, we have a monthly university, university district conversation on homelessness, um, which involves uh, folks who are um, providing either a, a direct service or advocacy and includes a lot of the churches in the area as well as people at the university. And we have a, we have a monthly meeting that went, it comes up on Monday, so we had a lot of planning to do about our next um, meeting, which is open and happening at the University of Lutheran, and it's going to focus on um, small projects that are working for people, addressing homeless issues, from, everything from hygiene to how to get Social Security if you don't have one, and identity, which are all huge issues for people that are homeless or formerly homeless. All right, Cindy. 
Well, I had an interesting week. Uh, one of the things we're doing in the hubs is we're doing a citywide drill on May 17th. And so part of what I do is help uh, do on the drill planning committee. So I've been reading a lot of books about Mount St. Helens and the Lahars and ash flow and the effects that it had on the city surrounding because that's what our drill will simulate this time is a lahar that uh, comes down the Duwamish Valley and does a lot of damage to the infrastructure but mostly it's citizens having to deal with a power out condition yet all this ash is coming down so it was very interesting and I'm going to be up writing a lot of that and then the other thing I did was today I attended a uh, meeting this morning on the first meeting of a planning committee for the disaster recovery uh, committee, which is a citywide effort to put something in place so that after a response and we move into long-term disaster recovery, what will the city's plan be? So it's kind of structuring that response. All right, Chaz. So I was part of a um, city neighborhood council biennial budget presentation at Seattle Center this past Sunday. We had the new acting budget director, uh, Ben Noble, former uh, uh, director of the uh, City Council Central Staff uh, and an uh, amazing speaker uh, walk us through, took him about 30 minutes to uh, describe the $3 billion plus dollar budget of the City of Seattle. Uh, a good portion of that is untouchable in the sense that it's your Seattle Public Utility or City Light rate and that pays for the service, uh, but there's about a billion dollars uh, that operate the city services that we uh, actually touch and feel. Uh, and can control. So it was quite interesting and the good news there is that uh, the city seems to be, I won't say stable, Ben was very uh, reluctant to say that the income is stable, but we are looking at probably a less than 10 percent and probably discretionary uh, set of reductions department by department uh, with no uh, real a slice required. So that was really good news. The economy certainly in the Northwest has picked up and that was a great thing to hear. So that was fun. Right. Thank you. And um, Cindy, do you want to uh, tell everybody how we got this podcast going? The oh, meeting? gladly. We had a, uh, the, the hubs are really only going to be effective if people are prepared to respond in a disaster. So part of that is, you know, just people have personal preparedness. But there are other people in the city that have skills that we would really like to uh, have them know about the hubs and be people who can show up. So the hubs hosted what we call a summit, and it was really a gathering uh, of people who were involved in Block Watch because they're already organized as uh, neighborhood groups and they know how to look out for each other. We wanted to hook up with the, what's called SNAP, which is Seattle Neighbors Actively Prepare. And that was, those are people who collect in small groups like Block Size, Block Watch, and they are trained in how to do disaster response for their own small neighborhood. And then CERT, which the city has been training about 60 people a year for the past two years now, and that is a highly skilled and um, six-week class where they learn uh, light urban search and rescue, uh, some first aid basics, but they are really the boots on the ground type responders after a disaster where they would be the manpower with the skills to go out and do some essential helping for uh, recovery. So the hub sponsored a summit that brought all those parties together and what we were trying to figure out is how do we stay in touch because we don't exactly have everybody's email distribution list, you know, and the city does facilitate some things, like they put out a SNAP newsletter, they have the Blockwatch newsletter, um, they do have connections with all the people who they trained in CERT and sent out into the neighborhoods, but we didn't have a way to talk directly to each other because those distribution lists are not shareable by the city. So in the summit, we brought everybody together and we said, we, you know, here's what each of us do. It was really good, and that's some of the education we'll give back to this podcast is, We'll go through what is SNAP and how do you do it, what is CERT and how do you do it. But in the end, we said the one of the starter ways that we can make each other stay connected is this new technology, which new for some of us, is you know podcasts and make it accessible for people so that they could weekly just listen in and learn something about preparedness and how to connect with each other, and and that turns into Block Watch. And then the, the last piece that got added in was 
there is so much about community that's important to preparedness that we added that civics 101 because if you want to do a uh, cert activity or you want to do a snap party there are funds at the city that will help pay for that so we wanted to make sure that people understood all the resources at the city that help support uh, connecting and being a neighbor and growing into the larger and then just in case there's a big disaster how can we all work together um, so I will say Chester is probably the key person to talk about the podcast because he'd already had that kernel of an idea and we just jumped on the bandwagon yeah well I've been planning this for a while and <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, I'm gonna go into well how, how did I get I got my sound equipment and then did all the research and listened to a lot of podcasts and and I'm dealing with the, the how to figure out the website and after this is all over you know this is a YouTube channel but it turn it into a podcast where people will be able to subscribe to the show and have it downloaded to their mp3 player or they can listen to it on their computer um, there'll be an iPhone and an Android app that people can purchase for I think two dollars and that's through the the podcast server that I'm using that I will be using that's going to be this next week working on all that um, the next uh, how is the show organized and what we're going to do is have uh, guest speakers coming along and um, and everybody here is um, a show producer they plan shows and and I'll be co-hosting and I'll have a show once a week or but I'm hoping just to be the back end person and uh, do the yeah the website and and co-host um, so let's just touch on um, what we have planned for some of the guests what guests we might have in the future because I know everybody's been planning for the show we're planned like six weeks in advance right now so uh, um, uh, Chaz I was going to say, you can hear the sound of paper being rustled. Um, I have a, a show, I guess my series is the civics um, engagement process and, and how you do it. So I have a show coming up on June 3rd, and I've gotten through, through two of the three proposed guests that I would have. One of them is uh, a neighborhood uh, district coordinator, uh, Thomas Whittemore. He's been working as the interface between the city and the, uh, the citizens for about 20 years now, so he's well versed with how citizens actually get plugged into community projects, how match funds get distributed, how city departments can be uh, responsive to citizen input. And Lois Mag, who is the uh, basically the uh, publicity and outreach uh, person for the Department of Neighborhood. So those two will provide information on how we as citizens can get engaged and my plan, because I thought it was such a fantastic presentation, uh, is to uh, see if I can convince Ben Noble as the acting budget director for the, uh, the city of Seattle under uh, Mayor Ed Murray to spend you know an hour with us on June 3rd because his grasp of the city includes uh, working for over a decade as a central staff supporting city council. Now he's working with the executive, so he has uh, two different perspective views on the budget process and the city is actually described in terms of what it is we do, how we pay for it, and who we employ. So the budget is actually the uh, document for understanding how a city works. So those are the, the two approaches that the three show will have. The city, how is it broken down? How does it work? Uh, what is the money that you're taxed and paying uh, provide for? Who are the folks that are affected by it? And, and if we have more or less what are the options, uh, for instance, with parks or public safety or things like that? And then how do you engage if you have a, a street traffic issue, if your school is uh, in an area where there's traffic uh, speeding problems, how do you get the SPD to come in and, and you know loan you a radar gun, those kinds of things. So you can get data to have them come back and say, yes, you're right, we've got a problem here. So those are the kinds of things that we'll be talking about. And uh, it's not... Uh, People think it's complex. It, it, it is complex if you look, it's like looking at an encyclopedia. If you look at the whole encyclopedia, of course it's complex. If you read one section at a time, it's not that complex. So 
we're going to be breaking it down and taking chunks and, and having really nice conversations with folks that do have uh, true insight. All right, and Edwin, future shows. Oh yes, um, yeah. I was, <laughs> I was reminding myself what I'm working on next. Yeah, but the first show I'm doing is coming up on June 10th, and uh, that's going to be uh, with I hope with Mark Solomon, uh, who's the uh, um, what community public safety officer for South and Southeast Precinct. That's going to focus on uh, block watch uh, issues, how to set one up, um, its care and feeding, what kinds of support is available, uh, most, specific, most specifically from the Seattle Police Department. And um, yeah, I, th I think that will generally be it. And um, block watch, as we've already mentioned, is yeah, the basic building block in terms of community engagement. Um, so we'll probably talk a little bit about that and then the sort of networks of block watches as well. So in Beacon Hill there's um, several in this area and stretching down to Rainier Beach and that's that will be kind of what we'll do next. And then I have another show coming up July 1 which may either expand on that or also go into um, issues around uh, community access and the city of Seattle and how they're supporting um, access and training for um, for media, you know, that, that you don't have to have a computer sitting at home. There are a lot of other ways to be hooked into the various things that are out there in terms of neighborhood blogs, um, other things like that. All right. And Cindy? I've got a couple of shows lined up. Uh, my first guest, I actually have the show next week, and that will be with Debbie Getz. And we'll do a couple of different segments within that. Uh, first, we're going to cover what is the Office of Emergency Management? What does it do? You know, how does it uh, plan for protecting citizens? And they have a lot of responsibilities. And um, probably one of the things she'll touch on, Barb Graff, who is the director of the Office of Emergency Management, just gave a presentation to City Council on uh, landslide hazards in Seattle. So that's the sort of data that they look at and they're responsible for all the plans that we might have to use after a disaster. So that will be an overview part of the section. Then we will uh, have a part that goes a little bit deeper into what is uh, Seattle neighborhoods actively prepare. You'll hear me call it SNAP. Um, how does one form a group? What's the purpose of the group? Uh, what do those people do for practice? Um, what? How do you map your neighborhood to find out what kind of assets or resources you might have that you can use after a disaster? Um, after that segment, we'll probably talk about that CERT program. Uh, I'm trying to remember, it's like, I can't remember it. C-E-R-T, CERT. And I re just remember it's response teams. And then again, how, how you can get into that class, what they do, what their specialty are, is. And then we'll probably talk a little bit about the hubs again, some more detail. And I'll show a map of where they are. And next week, we really will concentrate on what we're going to do in the uh, uh, exercise on May 17th. I want everybody to put that on their calendar because when we talk about what hubs are actually going to practice. We don't. We have about 52 hubs in the city of Seattle now, and we don't practice all of them at every drill, but um, maybe about 13, 14 at a time. And we love citizens to come and be a part of that drill because you're our actors, you're our citizens. So we can only help people if we are testing ourselves to see how can we match up people who need something with other people who have a skill or a tool or something to help someone else. So those are my, my four things that I'm planning on covering. All right. Next we're going to um, can I talk ask? about... Uh -huh. uh, so um, a lot of folks at this point may not know the, the role of a hub, that it's a, a radio location where we have live communication with the city's emergency management center downtown and with each other. Could you give a little exposition of that? I missed the last part of your question, Chaz. Sorry. Could you give just like a little brief description? So because you're much more uh, versatile, but you could, you know, folks that don't know what a hub is, they don't realize that it's an actual live participation event with, with other players. Yeah, exactly. It, it is, it is the, um, a, a hub is called that just because it's sort of like a communication spoken wheel, right? So in West Seattle, I'll use West Seattle because that's happens to be where I am most familiar with what how we do it. We've got uh, 13 different hubs set up. 
and those are those cover because uh, West Seattle is pretty geographically large. So everyone in kind of about a 5,000 person area are, were pretty well geographically dispersed across where those 13 hubs are. So my hub in Morgan Junction, people after a disaster, if you can't get through to the radio or the blog to find out what's going on, you would come down to the um, hub and we would start to say, well, we've set up our, our local citizen response and we're getting people showing up saying, hey, the church down the street, it's pouring down rain, the church down the street has opened up a shelter. So we know that we've got one shelter locally because we're waiting for the Red Cross to possibly open up a larger one. So those local needs and resources we're trying to match up. And we also have a radio system set up. We have a, a what's called ground mobile radio system, GMRS system with repeaters across West Seattle where we um, can have, if everything works good and there's an auxiliary communication team at the city, we can connect in and start to get some of that information that their public information officer will start to send out that's of interest specifically to West Seattle. Seattle is huge. It's 600,000 people. So when Cairo is trying to say, here's what's going on, they're either going to report about the area that's most significantly impacted or you know, the thing that is the most newsworthy. And so if I'm trying to find out if California Avenue Southwest is passable, I may not hear that for hours on Cairo. But if we work together, we can run, send a runner over and find out if California is passable and put it on the whiteboard so that people know, use California to get to the High Lion Hospital down in Burien or whatever. Many, many issues that we're working on, but that's the point of the drill. All right, thank you. And while you're watching this, um, I've set up a chat room where people can chat, and we're going to go through that a little bit. Um, if you go to, let me get my uh, screen up here, and there we are. Um, if you go to the seattleneighborhoodcrier.org, and then press the... SNC Live down below. You can click here to go to a browser, or you can just use this widget that's inside. And the browser, if I click on that, it gives you a full view of it. And it's really easy. Put a name in. Um, and sometimes these are hard to see. And then this box on the bottom here, you can type your questions in. And then it comes up and everybody can read what questions, comments. It just keeps the community going so everybody gets to be involved in the podcast using this IRC chat. Now we're going to go to um, oh, the website. Yeah, check out the website. It will walk you through a lot of things about the show. Let's see. Um, if we go to Radio Silence. I guess someone's got to keep on talking. <laughs> Okay, well, we can continue to talk about the, the fact that the, uh, the budget presentation this past week, um, so the city's in the, right now, they're in the develop the budget process mode. Uh, and, of course, the new mayor has his own expectations. Uh, there are, uh, uh, one of the things that was brought up, which is an interesting question for folks to get involved with, is um, the development of a metropolitan parks district to provide funding on a, more permanent basis for Seattle City Parks and Recreation. And the interesting thing that uh, was revealed at the budget conference on Sunday was that the City Council, which of course was pushing that uh, because it basically provides for uh, money outside of the general fund revenue stream, uh, which is where parks funding comes from, uh, and it's not tied to a, a, a short-term levy. 
uh, as the parks acquisition levies were. Um, so all city council members uh, supported it, and the budget that is being prepared for parks, Christopher Williams there too, uh, so parks is looking at 2014-2015 uh, and, and a little bit further out 2016 from the perspective of the Metropolitan Parks District actually passing and becoming real. And one of the questions that was asked was, well, what happens if the citizens say no to that, as they did to Proposition 1 for King County Transit, what does Parks do then? And that was the interesting question because they are moving forwards. There are certain assumptions that the city budget has. And so that's one of the things that we as citizens need to understand is that the city council is planning and the city is operating under the assumption that we will provide uh, something like $60 million a year annually with a property levy um, that has yet to be passed. So those are the kinds of things that um, we are hoping to bring to folks' attention. And, and not just that, but how do you get involved in those kinds of things? And if you want to know a little bit more about how Parks is going to spend that money, where do you go to find that out? All right, and and that will be on a, a future episode. That'll be on a future episode, right? I think the city, the the Civic 101 series starts June 3 and then moves uh, into June. All right, and um, back to the website. We ICE has put up a feedback form today, so if you have uh, feedback about the show, um, please email us. Any suggestions, ideas? And then we'll all be able to, to see that in the future. And let me get out of the full screen. There we go. And show notes. Uh, so there's 108 neighborhoods in the community. And if you go to um, seattle.gov slash neighborhood council, it, it shows you. Um, we'll have some of, of them on uh, some of the people there coming on to, to talk about it. And let's see if I can get uh, that website. Here we go. And and the, we'll be talking about uh, the 13 neighborhood districts and the regions. And, and, and the city is pretty much an overlay of so many districts, and we'll be talking about that. The, you know, the yeah, can I add? Mm -hmm. When and so there's a lot of um, places that citizens can plug in, and then there's also uh, to tag on with what Chaz is talking about. I'll be picking up some of the Civics 101, and we all have our schedules, and and we are trying to balance. One of the things I want to do is, uh, for sure, let people know about some of the tools that are online from the city that help you learn about your neighborhood. So um, there's mapping tools so that I did, and it, you know, it comes part of the emergency preparedness, but where you can pull up and see how close you are to a landslide zone or how close you are to a liquefaction zone and how you can use that data to find out where your side sewer is on your house. You know, some of that stuff that it's buried in there and, and we want to give you some practical tools so that it makes your life easier and it also makes your life easier to plug in and uh, work with the city on things that you want to promote or do for your own neighborhood. All right. And there was another... Um, let me get this up. Uh, that's the SNAP site. If you go to sale.gov and, and put in SNAP, you can get here. Um, and we talked about um, uh, the, the grants and the matching funds workshops. Right. I'll just mention that right now. That's happening right now, May 10th and May 15th. And if you go to the uh, settle.gov front porch we uh, website, you'll be able to find find that. Most of the stuff that I found here is through uh, blogs. And there's a lot of blogs in the city. And you'll need a, a, 
a, a blog <laughs> client, and what I'm showing you is a list of all the blogs for every parts of the city and um, and a future podcast will be going over how to to find them for your neighborhood. But if you go to uh, data.gov or data.seattle.gov slash community slash Seattle. But if you just look up uh, seattle.gov and, 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 and search in their, on their site for the data, you'll be able to come to this, this website here. Because I, I have something like 100 blogs that I go through and, um, and we'll be going over that. And one blog I found in the past is that if you have an Android or an Apple phone, there is a Fix It app. So if you see a, a hole in the road that needs to be fixed, you can request it to get fixed. I can um, personally vouch for that. I uh, report potholes and, and sidewalk outages, and um, you can uh, take a picture if you want, and then what happens uh, uh, in sequence is about one day later you get a, um, well, almost immediately you get an automatic response that says thank you for submitting uh, through the, the um, mobile app. And then about a day later, you actually get a response uh, from either SDOT or the Department of Neighborhoods as they are moving that request to the right department, and you can then track it. So it seems to be a lot easier than dialing 684 Road, which is what we used to do. Which is and there's also uh, online. If, if you don't have a smartphone, you can use the online request form to do that, too. And, and we'll have someone in a future episode um, who's part of this to go over it more. All right. I do. I have something to point out that's also a city kind of resource coming out, and, and I may be doubling up with something Chaz said earlier, but um, this coming week and bleeding into next week, there is a series of meetings held out in the communities on um, the Seattle budget. The start of the cycle is usually they go out and they start talking to the neighborhoods about what are your priorities. And um, you probably can go to the uh, seattle.gov and the Department of City Council and you'll be able to see uh, committees and agendas. And if you go to the budget committee, they should have those meetings posted. They're, they're actually uh, May 6, 7, 8, and 14. And each night deals with a different topic. So if you're really interested in giving them input on what you think the budget should be done to support transportation, then find the night that that is. And I, I didn't think to put that up in front of me so I could read that to you, but I believe transportation is uh, May 8th along with land use. And neighborhoods is May 7th. And... Uh, Health and Human Services and Economic Development is May 6th. I'm looking at my calendar. Sorry about that. The one I remember is that May 14th is uh, public safety, um, and that includes emergency preparedness. So I plan to go uh, give my two cents on what I think they ought to start allocating funding for. So heads up on that calendar event coming up. Right, and they've split the, the uh, each of those four meetings in different neighborhoods. So one is in Columbia City. That's the Housing, Economic Development, Human Services. May 6th. The transportation land use is at Garfield in Central District on May 7th. I had them all wrong then. <laughs> Parks and neighborhoods and libraries and the arts is uh, University Heights Community Center uh, on University Way at like a 50th, uh, the, the uh, location of the farmer's market. And then the 14th is the one you just mentioned, Cindy. That's the Youngstown Cultural Arts Center in Del Ridge for public safety and, and civil rights. All right, and, and if you haven't found it already, uh, S Seattle has their, uh, an event calendar, and it has anybody can put an event up. And on the on the on the far right hand side, you can uh, pick a neighborhood. I live in uh, Queen Anne. Let's see if I can find it. There it is. And then I click on that, and then it will give me a list of all the events that are happening. Then the audience, I can choose. Click none and go to adult. See what comes up. 
Oh, cable Comcast cable franchise meeting. That's not in Queen Anne. That's in Rainier Beach, but it pertains to us here, for me anyway, in Queen Anne, which seeing that leads me to um, see, I'll, uh, see if I can find them. Oop, I don't know. Um, the uh, One of the departments, the cable department, internet department in Seattle is asking people to fill out a, a uh, uh, oh, I know where it's at. And on, is that it? No. Uh, online survey. And if you go to the, uh, the office of cable office at seattle.com, if you go to the cable office, if you Google that and say online survey, you should be, be able to find, find that or at the seattle.gov. And this, uh, talk, uh, they want to hear from you about your cable service because in October of next year, is when the contract's going to be rewritten for 10 years. All right. Actually, there's something I just discovered, that, uh, Chester, and that is uh -huh. if, you just, uh, if you just Google surveys, well, not Google, if you go to the city, seattle.gov website and then just type in surveys in the search engine, there's actually... Uh -huh survey web page that comes up. So all current surveys show up uh, and it looks like there are one, two, three, four, five, six, six current surveys, one of which is the Comcast cable franchise agreement. All right. Um, There's been a lot of surveys coming across the blogs lately for the, the city of Seattle. They want to hear from everybody. So uh, please go there and check it out and fill out some of those surveys. Um, yeah, you know, I'd love to comment just a little bit on the cable franchise because I've worked on that before. Um, it comes up every 15 years, and I worked on it in the last time as a citizen. Um, there is um, a lot of good reason to get really involved in that. In the last franchise, Seattle did something rather innovative uh, because the cable, the, the, well, this, well the, first off, the Seattle and then there's the county franchise. They're separate, but often they have overlapping issues. And... Uh, at the county franchise, what they did was negotiate. They knew that the whole system had to be upgraded because it was uh, quite behind, and that meant, um, you know, more generally franchises are like an opportunity for revenue. Period. That's the way they look at them. Uh, but there was a very smart guy heading up the, the county franchise office um, who realized there was an opportunity, given that the cable companies needed uh, permission to tear up streets to do basically to pull fiber throughout the city. And they successfully negotiated as one of the first cities in the country for additional fiber to be pulled for the county's use. The sad part of that was that got caught in a political morass. And uh, so we actually have an amazing amount of dark fiber in the county uh, that extends also to cross borders into the city that's underutilized. That another. The point being, that there's way more to cable franchising, cable franchise operations than just revenue and entertainment, um, because broadband networks within the city and county are incredibly helpful, useful for education, healthcare, emergencies, um, all kinds of other things that um, become available and affordable when um, there's a really in, when mainly when citizens insist on it. So other cities have done quite different things with that rather than what's happened. Well, here we started on the right path and then it got uh, derailed by um, budget and other people, well, specifically uh, initiatives like those started by Tim Iman. Uh, it was, an, it was a, an unfortunate left turn. Some good came out of it, uh, like the King County Public Library System has made spectacularly good use of the broadband network that the cable franchise for All right. Oh, next I'm going to talk about uh, the copyright 
So the show is a Creative Commons copyright. It's uh, available for anybody. Let's see if I can get there. And and it's a Creative Commons attribute, so anybody can uh, use what we produce here. And um, so that's how we have it licensed, open for everybody. Music, I'm always open to appealing to people to create something jazzy for us if we hadn't se selected anything yet. Um, well, I found a, a, a Creative Commons sound that we used at the beginning of the show, but we're always looking for... Uh, we're looking for help. That's right. And let me go to there. That's how to be a guest. Let's see. Getting involved. Um, we're looking for volunteers who, who, who might know WordPress, multi-site, uh, social media outreach, uh, sound engineer, uh, computer tweaking. I'm using Linux Mint. We have, uh, um, I, I kind of stick with Linux. We have Macintosh user, a couple Macintosh and one Windows user. Um, we're looking for other people who are interested in doing um, show planning. And if you'd like to join us, uh, please send us uh, under the feedback that you're interested and we'll get a hold of you. Um, eventually we want to turn this into a nonprofit. Show art, if you, right now I'm just using, let's see what I have here for, uh, oh, there, here it is. This is what we're using right now for, uh, I don't have it on that page yet. I had to come up with something, so I just, I'm not that, that great in graphics. Um, this is our opportunity to ask, are there any cartoonists out there that would love to maybe, uh, as these shows uh, occur, do one or two or three kind of like courtroom drawing cartoons to, uh, to illustrate uh, not necessarily the, the uh, YouTube or the podcast, but just to uh, distribute uh, flyers so that we can say, hey, catch the one on civic activism, and it might show people diving into a deep pool of civic mud. Sounds great. Uh, oh, along with uh, uh, donate. Oh, uh, yeah, a, a theme for the for the show, and bumpers, and bumpers are like five second sound segments. And what we'd like everybody to do is spread the word about the show. And this being the first one, it's going to get better. <laughs> it can only get better. Yeah. It's been a long time since I've done this. I did a radio show in college, a couple of radio shows in college. Hmm. Well, and and one of the, so one of the things that we do want to do is uh, make sure that this is accessible to everybody because you don't have to be a techno geeky. I, I'm kind of like the test chicken on this one. If I can get logged on and I can actually become a producer, anybody can do this. So we really do want to make this so everybody can tune in and, and learn and uh, get involved with their community. Yeah, and if I could comment on that, I, I, yeah, I totally agree. I think that, that, that ease of access is a big issue, and we want to hear from folks about that. The other thing is, as this progresses over time, it's our hope, and we, we feel if we're doing it right, this will be, we hope, an incredibly useful and dynamic resource, because you can, you can go to, uh, you can check out past shows. We will, as time goes, uh, hopefully, make it easier to basically search for things. You can go back in and you can say, you know, I remember that it seems they touched on, you know, um, house retrofitting for, for you know, uh, earthquake preparators, whatever. The idea is to um, provide a forum and a resource that will be increasingly rich as the show progresses and more people get involved. Well said. And the show notes will be on the website. And you'll be able to search the show notes um, for topics if, if you want to listen to, go back and listen to stuff that you may have missed. 
All right, anything else? <laughs> Everybody's quiet. So I think that's that's it for today. And um, next week is Chaz? No, nope, right? next week is me. It's you, Cindy. Yep. All right. I don't have the list down here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, May 13 is Cindy. I think we're still looking for... Was Cindy Nick... and, and Debbie Getz is going to be my guest, and she is an ex excellent speaker. She does a lot of the teaching of classes, and in fact, between her and me, you know, we are not going to have a problem filling up an hour. Cool. Great. And that's it. Um, thank you, everybody. And see you next week. And see you next week. All right. Right. So can we do a little thing like KUOW does, KUOW extras? This will be like... Uh, and we're off. <laughs>